So now we're gonna visit the oldest mosque in China. Well, it's not, technically it's not the oldest mosque in China. It's the oldest, it's the oldest Arabic style mosque. Uh, the oldest mosque is in, in Guangzhou. It was built uh, in Tang Dynasty. It was built within like 30 years of Hajira. Normally, when we think of Islam in China, we tend to think of the northwestern provinces where the Uyghurs, the Kazakhs, the Tajiks, or Hues traditionally reside. But the oldest Arabic style mosque, the Qingjing Mosque, is actually in Quanzhou, in the southern province of Fujian. Behind me is the mosque. Um, you can see some Arabic script up there. As you may know, Ar uh, Islam is heavily against idolatry, so. There's no uh, statues or pictures of uh, deities or saints anywhere. Uh, I think if you're a Muslim, it's free for you to get in there and pray. Uh, but for non-believers, they're also allowed to visit. But you have to pay like three RMB, that's like 40 cents or something. And that's good news for me. I get to get inside and take a look at one of the, the oldest mosques in China and I think the entire East Asia region. Let's get inside. The mosque was built in the year 1009, or year 400, in the Islamic calendar. Back then, it was the Song Dynasty in China, and there was a lot of trade among China, the Arabs, and the Cholas from India, as well as the kingdoms in the Southeast Asian region. And Quanzhou was a major port city, which attracted a lot of Arab businessmen to conduct trade in the city. And there were actually Arab families who lived there for generations. The last head of customs in Quanzhou city and the Song dynasty was actually an Arab and his offsprings still live in the region till this day. Right after you enter the mosque, you would see on your right side two stills that commemorate the reconstruction of the mosque after two devastating earthquakes in the early 1600s. These stills provide a brief history of the mosque as well as a history of the religion of Islam uh, in China. But as it was written 400 years ago, some facts are a little bit dubious. But one interesting fact is that the stills refer to the Islamic religion as the Qingjing religion. Um, and Qingjing has two meanings in Chinese. One is peaceful and the other is clean. And that is how the name of the mosque was derived. And the old mosque, there is a small museum showing the relics of the old mosque and explaining to people not familiar with Islam the praying process. And right in front of the museum is where people used to pray. You can stand here and imagine Muslim tradesmen from all over the world used to come here to pray. Behind the old praying hall is a Chinese style praying hall that's smaller in which there is an incense holder of lotus shape, which symbolizes cleanness and purity in an East Asian culture. And in the backyard, like in most religious venues in China, you can find calligraphic works granted by Muslim and non-Muslim government officials throughout the centuries. Right beside the old mosque, there is actually a new one constructed with the donations of Qaboos bin Said, the previous Sultan of Oman. The new mosque is currently in use. On the wall, you can see the clocks denoting praying times of the day. And since we visited on Jumeh on a Friday, there were Hui and Kazakh ethnics who came here to pray. And here, inlaid in the wall of the old mosque is an imperial decree granted by the Ming Emperor in the year 1407, which ordered that no government official, military personnel, or civilian shall bully or humiliate you, and that he who does so shall be met with punishment. Interestingly, the board explaining this imperial decree in modern Chinese is put away, hidden in a small space for storage. Maybe there was a typhoon or something, or maybe a small historical detail like this still has his power lingering over our time.